Okay, um, so today we'll be talking about um, how to do depth of field in Maya. So, so basically depth of field is like your defocus in, in depth um, and we can do it with the Maya um, settings. Okay, so first what we need to do is, okay, I'll just quickly do a test render um, so that we can save this image. And later on we'll do a comparison with the, the one that has the depth of field. Okay, I'll just let it resolve for a while. Okay, meantime, um, if you guys are, are interested in the documentation, you can look, I will just, okay, just put it here. Okay, so basically um, inside the Arno um, documentation, you can look into, um, there is this page where they talk about the depth of field that pictures and all, um, what are settings that you can set to, to enhance or create a certain effect that you want. Like for example, the blades, if you're using three blades, you're getting a triangle shape in your bokeh. Or if you're using five blades, you're getting this polygonal um, shape or seven blades. Um, you can change the curvature to get a round shape bokeh if you, if you like it for your scene. Um, and also you can um, distort or squash your, your depth of field um, with, by changing the aperture aspect ratio. Basically in the anamorphic, lens, your depth of field will be, will be elongated. Okay, so I will put the, the link in the video um, when I'm done with it. And you guys can take a look if you want to know more about the details um, of uh, the settings to, to tweak. Okay, so now I have, okay, I'll just probably stop at this, this moment. I'll just take a screenshot. Okay, so this is a render without any um, depth of field. Okay. So how we can set depth of field is first thing we need to make sure um, we are able to get the depth information. For example, um, how far is this character from the camera, right? So what we need to do is we need to turn on the option. So we we'll go to display, hit sub display, and you go to object details and make sure that it's turned on. Okay, once you turn on inside your perspective view, you should be able to see um, these additional settings um, I mean, I mean, not in the perspective, in your viewport, you should be able to see these additional um, settings. And there's one that is called distance from camera. Okay, uh, you will need the information later on. Um, so now if I were to look through my um, camera that I set up, I want, for example, I want to focus on this guy and I want my egg that is behind him to be out of focus, right? What I can do is I'll go to my main camera. Okay, go to your attribute editor. Oh, sorry, not the main camera. It's the camera that I created for this uh, demo. So it's a dove cam. Okay. Um, go to the shape, scroll down, it, open up the Arno tab. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, you should get this enable depth of field um, checkbox here. So just check the checkbox. Okay. So once you check the checkbox, it, it will tell the camera to render with um, depth of field. But um, that, that will just apply the basic settings, which has the aperture size set to zero. Um, when the aperture size is set to zero, basically you're not getting any depth of field. So if I were to do a render now, um, I will not get any difference, um, uh, in my render. Okay. So first thing we need to set is the focus distance, right? So this means that where we want to focus in depth, um, from this camera. So what, how we can, um, find the value for this is, for example, if we want to focus on the egg, Let's just click on the egg um, geometry. And you will see that the distance from camera, it's one, two, nine units um, from camera. So let's say I want to focus on the egg. I'll just go into my top cam, set the focus distance to one, two, nine. I like, we can just round up to 130. And then I'll just put the aperture size to the, the max one so that we exaggerate the, the demo. Okay, so now if I were to do a quick render, you should see that the, the focus is on the egg and the foreground will be defocused. Okay, uh, one thing to take note, once you turn on um, depth of field, your render time will definitely get more expensive. So use it appropriately, uh, use it uh, only when you really need it. Right. Cool, I'll just let it resolve a bit more so we can we can see how it looks like. Alright, so I, I guess let's not 
um, wait on it. I will just stop the renders for now. So you can see that the foreground has been dis defocused and maybe the background as well, even here, has been defocused. So it, it it's only sharp on the egg, right? So um, that's how you can do. So now, for example, I want to focus on my character. So I'll just select my character, check the distance from camera. It's 31 unit. I'll just go to my camera. Um, inside the focus distance, just change it to 31. Okay, I'll just save this image and I'll do uh, render again. So as you can see, it's very defocused in the background. So that makes it feels like a very um, small f-stop that, that you're using. So it might not look so realistic. So what you can do is you can tweak the aperture size um, to reduce the, the blurriness, right? Um, so you can, okay, I'll just let you resolve a bit more so we, we have some comparison renders later on. So just, just wait for a while. In the meantime, if you guys got any questions, just feel free to, to ask as well. Okay. Okay, so you see the body is in focus, but the eyes area actually is, is not in focus. So technically, if I were to select the eyes, the distance probably is slightly different. Okay, so I probably want to focus the eyes. So 28.392. So I will stop this. Because it's not so nice when the face it's it's not focused right so 28.392 okay just do a render again so now you see it's the face is in focus and even part of the body is out of focus really so it's a very very shallow um depth of field now later we will just play with the different aperture size um to to take the the focus value Okay, let's just wait for a while. Okay, so from while well, well, we are waiting, we can talk about all the different um, settings here. So the size controls how blur your, your the focus is. The blades will control how sharp your all the... Uh, let me just pull out the documentation so you can see it clearly. Here. Okay, so... Um, so if I scroll down and inside here, okay, so there is this curvature blade. So if by default the value is zero, so if you have zero, it's a um, basically straight lines and you'll get a square bokeh. And if you increase it to one, basically you'll smooth out the, the blades in the, um, you'll smooth out the blades and you'll get a rounder um, bokeh uh, from it. And also if you increase your aperture blades, the, the amount, the more blades it has, the, the rounder the shape will become. So um, really depends on your, your scene and how what kind of bouquet that you want to appear in, in your scene. Okay, so for, with that in mind, let's just, okay, I think the render, we can just stop it now. Yeah, okay, so now for example, I, I will just save this and I find that it's too um shallow i can just put 0 0.5 on the aperture size maybe the blade i want to get some um uh shape in it you can change to seven and maybe the the blades i want it to be slightly rounder so i get a, a rounder bouquet so i can maybe put 0 0.5 halfway there okay then let's just do it render as well again okay as you can see now it's not so focus like before and it still gives you the very nice feeling um, like like how a normal lens will, will react when you shoot something that's up close and the fall off will, will, will be defocused um, in depth who I think this is still feeling a, a touch too much for me so I will just stop this and I'll reduce the aperture size furthermore so 0.25 So I just want I want to keep him in in focus, and I just want to defocus um, more on the egg itself. Yeah, I think I, I prefer this this value. So I'll just let it resolve a bit more, and then we'll compare to the original image that we had um, early on without any depth of field.
Okay, so you, if you see the, the very defocused one, uh, you get you see that um, I have a very round bokeh here. Um, you can tweak the, the look of it. So now let's just... Cool, yep, okay. I think let's not wait for it to fully resolve. Uh, maybe a bit more. Okay. So um, with some defocus settings and without. So you can see that it gives some nice feeling to your to your shot itself. And it creates that kind of suspense that you know, something is coming, creeping behind him and it, it doesn't fully reveal your what is coming behind him and, and it gives a, a different kind of feel to your shot. So you guys can use it um, in your shot to, to give it um, a different kind of mood. But um, again, with depth of field turned on, uh, I just need to repeat this because the render time will goes up and it will get um, noisy renders uh, more easily. So how you can counter that is you will need to increase the AA samples in your render settings to fix um, to fix the noise issue. So you need to increase your AA samples and um, the values really depends on how much uh, you push and you need to compensate from the a samples. Um, so one thing I really um, prefer is um, doing depth of field in post uh, because I personally I don't like to have the depth of field big into the render. So when it's big into the render, technically you lose control to how much um, you basically you lose the control to tweak it in post. If I were to render it um, fully sharp like that um, and I separate out the renders um, in different render layers, what I can do is I can go into Nuke and I can defocus them um, however creatively I want. So for example, I can choose to uh, defocus the background a, a little bit more and maybe I can keep the the egg itself a bit more sharp. Uh, so all those you can control in post, but if you were to bake it in your render, you, you can't tweak it anymore from here. Um, so um, that's what personally I feel. All these kind of... Um, things um, can be done in post should should be um, considered to uh, how should I say um, all these kind of things that are able to be controlled in in post uh, we should keep it um, cleaner and that way you also get a faster render turnaround if you want to do if you want to you plan to solve the noise through this um, render you just need to keep cranking the uh where is my render settings okay okay uh, you just need to crank cranking the a samples to a point where so for example i will just go in i'll um, do a region uh, render and i'll just do a render now okay then okay so for example this is done then it still looks noisy right i'll just increase this Maybe I need to do a snapshot so we can do some comparison. Okay, you can see as you start increasing the samples, it get resolved better. Of course, um, dealing with high A samples again will will make your render time go crazy. So um. There's another option is you can use the um the denoiser um in Arno. So you can go to, so you render out your image as it is as it is, then go to the um, utilities, there is this Arno denoiser. So we will cover this in, in a future session, so don't worry about that uh, if you don't know yet. Um but yeah, so pushing the A samples can help you solve. Let's just try a crazy values. So as you can see now, it takes really long to, to calculate it. Really. Okay. So cases where you really want to bake the defocus in your renders is where maybe you know you are you are very confident in in your setups. You know that um you will get a nice render out of the box, and you don't want to go through the comp process. Um, uh, go ahead and and set the defocus in your in your renders. Um. 
or for example your company doesn't have a compositor and you you just need to give your client uh, something nice to look at um you can just break the defocus if you if you if you need it yep you can see that um now it's very clean but the render time as you can see after so long it's still at 1% And it's just a small region and it's already taking so long. So now, um, yeah, so after that, you'll start decreasing this and see whichever values gives you a reasonable, clean looking image and doesn't take too, too long to render. So you need to balance it um, later on uh, once you have everything set up nicely and prepared. Okay, so if you find this video helpful, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section and I will try to re reply them as soon as I can. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.